What's going on, Flix Talkers? Welcome back to another video. This time, a Blu ray and DVD haul from my local thrift stores. Now, I've definitely stocked up for this spring, for this summer 2022 upcoming, for potential first time movie watches. And you guys have been awesome on the channel. Loving a lot of the stuff that I've been putting out as far as movie reactions goes. You guys are leaving some great comments along the way. You guys tell me to check out this, this, that, and the third. And sometimes I get lucky and I do find them at the thrift store. So I just wanted to show you guys some potential movie reactions coming in the future. So look forward to these. Not all of them, but some look pretty, pretty dang good, and I really do want to check these out for the channel. So, I'm going to do this kind of all raw and unedited as much as I can, but I got two bags to go through from uh, Goodwill, and we also have, so, right there, Salvation Army. Sorry, guys. I went to about maybe three or four over the course of about a week or so, and I realized I haven't really shown them on video too much unless it was like my Instagram or whatever. So I'll just go into the first bag and then we'll kind of just talk about what I got and uh, roughly maybe, you know, what it could possibly be. Cause I'm not gonna read the synopsis. It's gonna take too freaking long. So without further ado, let's get into this first bag, guys. So starting off with some DVDs right here, we have the original Glenn Ford and Van Heflin. It is 310 to Yuma right here. Now I have seen this, uh, the remake of the of, of this film right here, and um, I don't remember it to be honest, uh, but I do remember seeing it one time. I wanna say when it came to streamer or whenever it came to DVD Blu-ray, uh, I did check it out. Uh, but people tell me to check out the, the original classic, and this is from the 50s. It's a black and white. This was uh, from 1957, I believe. Um, a 1950s classic western, it says. Um, yeah, and it has a couple of pictures right there on the back. Once again, not gonna get too much into it because there's so many pics to go over with and I and I don't really, you know, wanna make this video an hour long. So that's my first pickup right here. This is another one a lot of people told me to check out since I do like M. Night. Shalaman for the, for the most part, or Shyamalan. I always pronounce that name incorrect. I think we all do. M. Night Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan. Pretty straightforward, once you know. Uh, and I'm glad I could get it. Uh, it is on DVD though, so that's okay. I mean, I'm more here for the movie itself. And if I like it, I'll pick up the Blu-ray of The Village right here. So this one I think is a two disc set, I wanna say. I could be wrong. Sometimes these old school DVDs, they came with two discs because they would put the bonus on. Um, no, this one's actually one disc. Sorry, it just felt really heavy. Um, sometimes they would put the special features and whatnot on the second disc. So The Village right here, don't know what it's about. Uh, it looks like it is starring, um, who's it starring? Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, Adrian Brody, Joaquin Phoenix. So, oh, that's that's the reason why I wanted to check this one out because of Joaquin Phoenix. I'm a huge super fan of his. Um, and there's more Joaquin Phoenix pickups uh, in this haul right here. Uh, next up is the fourth installment of Indiana Jones and the uh, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Sorry, these subtitles. Uh, I did pick this one up on DVD just so I can complete my, um, you know, series watch so I can get all caught, caught up to uh, the fifth one that will be potentially coming out, and he's like in his 80s, I want to say. I could be wrong about that, but I believe late 70s, uh, early 80s. Um, this one uh, was not really well received amongst the other three. I did catch the other three. I absolutely loved them. I believe the second one, uh, don't quote me, guys, because I, you know, I, I know the first one's Raiders. I believe the second one is uh, Temple of Doom. I believe that's my favorite one. That's a Kalima. That's my favorite one right there. Raiders is awesome as well. And I believe it also stars, um, I just, uh, you know, I think we're getting a callback right there uh, to this actress right here. You can't really see it too much, guys. But I believe, I don't know her name off head. Uh, but it says a Steven Spielberg film. Um, but that's awesome that we're also getting a revisit of that character. I do like Shia LaBeouf for the most part. I mean, despite his controversy, I like his performances. Um, and Harrison Ford, I love him. So, uh, I, once again, I just wanted to complete this. Uh, I'm not really looking for anything, you know, uh, different from the other three. And, I mean, how long can you be going discovering different artifacts and caves for, right? I mean, <laughs> but I guess they're still going on. It's, it's an amazing character, I will just say that. Um, and this next one right here is also a DVD. And I've uh, been trying a long time to get this movie on Blu-ray, but I can't seem to find it. Uh, so the, do the DVD will be okay for me. It is Mel Gibson's Apocalypto. Everyone always tells me to check this one out. Sorry, there's mochi hair on the side right there. Uh, people always tell me to check this one out, that it's crazy, it's insanity. Uh, Mel Gibson, I mean, you know, uh, I saw Passion of the Christ, 
and um, a lot of the films that he was in, like Lethal Weapons and whatnot, and, and a couple other ones in the 90s growing up and whatnot. Uh, but they say this one is is great. It's fantastic and I gotta check it out. As far as like story-wise goes, they say it's extremely like graphic in nature and I just wanna be blown away. Um, so there we go from that. Uh, let's dig next into this uh, next pile I can fit in my hand. Oh, here we go, right here. Um, another Joaquin Phoenix, like I said, Ed Harris and Anna Paquin. It is Buffalo Soldiers right here and it has the old school, uh, um, you know, previously viewed uh, a sticker right there of twelve ninety nine. I only got it for two dollars, uh, so don't let that fool you. Uh, but very, very excited to check this one out. This was actually a recommendation in one of my recent chats. People said, "You like Walking Phoenix? Have you seen Buffalo Soldiers?" Had no clue what they were talking about. I believe this is from the early nineties. Um, oh no, I think this is actually two thousand. I could be. I'm drawing a blank right now, and I don't see it here. I'm, I think this is two thousands, like two thousand or two thousand and one, something like that. Anyways, I'll put it up on screen once I find out. It doesn't say... Isn't that great when you're looking for the date and it doesn't say, especially when you're on camera? Okay, well, I don't see it. I believe it's the late 90s or early 2000s. But Buffalo Soldiers, I heard it's a satirical uh, comedy or a dark comedy. Uh, the next one was, I believe, another one that people recommended, and I finally found it on physical. It is uh, Kellen McGillis and Jodie Foster in The Accused, and I did look this one up as far as, like, a Google search, and it got great riveting reviews as far as, like, performance-wise from uh, Jodie Foster. Uh, I believe it's about some um, brutal uh, sexual allegations, or, or, or brutal, I'm sorry, like, like of a... Of a of a rape or some kind of like um, sexual encounter forced and uh, I just heard it's a great uh, uh, courtroom drama type of film so I'm, I can't wait to check this one out right there that one says 1988 um, next one up very excited to check this one out because I didn't even know this existed but I love these two actors I had mentioned the car ride home uh, to Laura I hadn't seen Angela Bassett and Lawrence Fish Fishburne together since um, Boys in the Hood and it looks like they also did another film what's love got to do with it and that's the story of Tina Turner right there Absolutely love these actors, and I want to say it's maybe a couple of years after Boys in the Hood, or once again, another, they don't give me the damn year. Why, why do they do this? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I hate when I'm, when I'm not uh, uh, quick on my toes when it comes to the years, but I want to say it's around the early 90s as well. I could be totally wrong. Um, no, doesn't say. So uh, I'll put it up here once again on screen after I Google it, after I put out the video. Uh, next up, very excited to get this one or have this one in my collection now. Probably upgrade if it's a good movie, and I'm sure it's a great movie. It's a Martin Scorsese picture. It is Leonardo DiCaprio in The Aviator. Um, so you guys know I love Leo as an actor, so what I got to do, I got to do my due diligence and go back and watch all of his movies, right, or try to find them. Um, same thing with Keanu Reeves, Joaquin Phoenix, uh, Jared Leto, a lot of these actors that I really do uh, like, I want to go back, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal, I want to go back in their early catalogs and kind of find out their early works and whatnot. Uh, so that being said, Aviator, don't know anything about it, I really don't, um, I'm assuming he's a pilot, uh, yeah, Aviator, right? Uh, it looks like just based on the attire right there, I see Kate Blanchett as well as, uh, who is that? Kate Blanchett and also um, Kate Beckinsale. John C. Riley, Alec Baldwin. Very cool. Jude Law, I also saw right there on the back too. So very, very excited for that one. Uh, ending off this first bag right here, which I'll put to the side because it's making a lot of noise. Um, this one was just kind of a silly buy. I don't know if I'm going to watch this on a first time watch at all, like for the channel. But it was one of those that this came around the time of American Pie waiting um, you know, all these, uh, this is before, way before Super Bad, but, you know, during the time that I was going into high school, uh, I went into high school in 1999, I believe this came out in 1998, and I think we were all really scared, you know, uh, of what to expect from high school, and I think this movie, I don't know if it does a good job of portraying that, um, like a Dazed and Confused or whatever, but this one, Can't Hardly Wait with, um, uh, what's her name, J uh, Jennifer, uh, sorry guys, um, Sarah Je uh, Jennifer Love Hewitt, sorry, Seth Green, and uh, I don't know any of the other ones, Ethan Embry, uh, don't really know these actors involved, but I always used to see this cover, especially with Seth Green acting all like, Whoa! you know, acting all goofy and whatnot, um, let me know if this is a good one right here, uh, as far as like, you know, teenage angst, quirkiness and whatnot, but, god, Jennifer Love Hewitt, man, she was a queen, I mean, especially when, uh, when, uh, I Know What You Did Last Summer came out, right, everyone was going gaga for her on that, and uh, I believe she came from a show, I want to say, like a TV show. Could be wrong. 
But this is around the time of her to Sarah Michelle Gellar just killing it like on, on, on any entertainment medium, right? Uh, next one, uh, uh, you know, I kind of forgot about this one, but I always told myself if I ever got a chance to, to pick it up on physical, I would check it out, especially for the channel, because I heard the performance in this is fantastic from Sean Connery. Didn't even know Alec Baldwin was in it. The Hunt for Red October. Uh, I always try to go for the widescreen releases because sometimes they get hit, you know, in the full screen, and I'm like, I can't do it. And I've accidentally picked up some full screen ones, and I've had to watch them, you know, in full screen. Uh, this one is 1990. Don't know too much about it. I believe it's on a submarine or, uh, you know, some kind of battleship uh, uh, type of deal. Um, and I don't know much more about it than that other than um, I haven't seen a lot of Sean Connery films or Alec Baldwin films for that reason. You guys let me know what you thought about that one. Uh, next up, a lot of people have been... <laughs> Surprisingly, a lot of people told me to check this one out, even though I never saw the original. So maybe I said well, I should watch the original um, uh, Walk Tall, or, or, or I don't know. What, I know this is a parody of something. Uh, uh, walk the line. Walk the line. It is Walk Hard with John C. Riley right here. And unfortunately, it is DVD. I mean, I know there's Blu-ray copies out there. It's an Apatow Productions. That's awesome. Uh, I love John C. Riley. I can't wait to see who's all in it because if it's the same people that made Knocked Up and and Super Bad, I'm sure we're gonna get a cast of you know Seth Green, uh, um, all these guys. Guys that are always, you know, Kristen Wiig right there, Tim Meadows. Oh yeah, this is like this is like SNL Apatow uh, uh, fest right here. Um, but I believe this does make fun of the Walk the Line movie or the Johnny Cash character. Uh, and I don't know anything about it. Uh, I believe uh, I saw a trailer uh, once on a live stream, and um, it, it seemed very, 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 very funny. Uh, it's interesting because there's a theatrical version that's 96 minutes, and then an extended version that's 120 minutes. That's almost 30 minutes of extra footage. That's crazy. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> so, you know, let me know what you guys thought about this one. Should I watch the extended version? I'll probably watch this for the channel because I think a lot of people uh, really did like this one. All right, jump into my next bag of goodies, guys, right here from the Goodwill. Uh, let's just throw it up on here. Uh, this one right here, another one I've been trying to get my hands on for such a long time. I know it has a Blu-ray release as well. Uh, that's okay. I'm just watching this. Probably a first time watch because I don't know if movies like this are up my alley. You guys let me know. Uh, are they up yours? Uh, up yours. <laughs> But anyways, another guy. I haven't seen too many of his films, or hers for that matter, Richard Gere and Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Now, this is the 10th anniversary edition. Uh, it's really jacked up on the back. It's got like, you know, it's like corroded and whatnot. That's okay. Um, you know, I thought it was funny right here. They're advertising bonus footage and interviews right there on the bottom. This is like when, when DVDs were like a big thing, you know? Uh, we, were, we were merging out of the days of, of VHS only to now uh, uh, DVDs and whatnot, right? Um... So yeah, once again, I don't know. I think this is the rom-com. Um, I don't even know. I don't know what it's about. I really couldn't tell you. Um, but I'm excited to check that one out because I know that people consider that more of like an, I guess, an iconic movie. I don't I don't know. I don't know if it would, maybe, maybe I'm just thinking it is. All right, next up, uh, we got a little bit of action. Some Wesley Snipes action, guys. A lot of people tell me to uh, check this one out. When I picked it up, I went on um, Google and I checked out the ranking for this one because... I really try to look up an actor's resume and say, top ranked films, where is where does this film rank? Because I don't want to get, especially if I haven't seen too much of their works, I don't want to get a lower tier movie from them. And this is in great condition for a DVD. It's one of the clamps, you know, the clamp shell, the clampers, whatever you call them. I don't know. It is Wesley Snipes in Passenger 57. Um, I looked it up. This is, I think, his third ranked movie. His second or third ranked like top movie of all time as far as like performance goes uh and, and it was really well revered um love him and everything that i see for the most part and there's a, still a lot more movies i have to watch i don't really the only thing i can see you know something's going on with him on a plane i didn't re i didn't really read it um but yeah possibly like a uh like a non-stop liam neeson situation before liam neeson right or before that movie all right, you guys let me know what you guys thought of that one. And uh, is that a good pickup? And will I enjoy it, you think? All right, next up, and I just saw him in um, in my watch for uh, uh, Doctor Strangelove. He was one of the main guys. I believe it's um, George C. Scott. I believe this actor's name. Anyways, it's in Pat uh, Patton. And it's around the same time, I want to say it came out. Uh, so this came out in 1969. That was 64. Four, I want to say. Uh, so this is a couple years later, guys. But Patton, uh, this one right here. Uh, I'm starting to get trying to get more into war movies, 
and I heard this one's pretty good. And once again, another PG war movie, which always throws me for a loop. Doctor Strange Love was also PG. Um, and, you know, if you guys have seen my watch on that, you guys know I really, really did enjoy that one. Uh, but if they can hit me with a war movie, a crime movie, that's, I don't know if this is based on a true story, by the way. But anyways, if they can tell a great story without having to resort to anything past PG, damn. Kudos to you, because it's hard to do that in nowadays, you know, just nowadays entertainment. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that because uh, he did blow me away in um, Doctor Strange Love once again, that actor. Uh, also, another one I did look up this film as far as like where does it rank uh, amongst the, this guy's catalog and resume of movies. And I'll just say I don't like him too much as, a, as, a, as an actor, as a regular guy. Um, but it's Steven Seagal and Under Siege because I never saw this one right here. Another clamshell. Right there. I believe they're called clamshells. I, I, don't, I don't know. Maybe it just looks like a clamshell that opens up. Um, so yeah, Under Siege. I'm just going based off the cover. Something's going on uh, on, on, a, on a battleship there. Uh, and a lot of fighting ensues. <laughs> that's all I can say. Uh, so I'm really excited to see that one because I know that's one of the more of his, his uh, famous properties. Next up is a Blu-ray, guys. I actually did throw this cover into a actual Blu-ray case of mine right here. Uh, because it came in like one of those like DVD... Uh, Hollywood video blockbuster cases that was like really thick and it was like a DVD case. It is Orphan and I, I've been wanting to check this one out. Like it's funny that it says a rental right there. Um, but I heard so many things about this one. Uh, I have not had anything spoiled for me. I just heard it has like a crazy twist ending. Please don't spoil it for me. Be respectful. And um, I like creepy nature films like this. I don't know any of the actors involved. Uh, I'm trying to look right here. I think uh, is that Skarsgård? Uh, uh, Peter Sarsgaard in here? And who else is in? Oh, CC, CCH Pounders in here. And then, uh, oh, Vera Farmiga. Awesome. I'm very, very excited. Vera Farmiga does these crazy, like, ever since Conjuring, man. She does, like, uh, was she in Conjuring? Yeah, yeah, Conjuring uh, films. She always does these, these creepy-ass movies, man. But uh, I'm really excited to check that one out. Um, don't know if it's good. Don't know if it's bad. I just hear that a lot of people really do request, like, this movie from me. Uh, they always tell me, have I checked out The Orphan? Have I checked out The Orphan? And I'm like... I remember when it came out and it just really didn't grasp my, you know, uh, attention or whatever, for whatever reason. All right, now next up, this is actually at a local Dollar Tree, uh, believe it or not. And um, I picked this one up because I love Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, I'm not the biggest sports movie fan, but it is Friday Night Lights. You guys let me know. Don't know anything about it. I'm just guessing it's a sports mo uh, a football movie. Um, but I do love uh, Billy Bob Thornton. Uh, so I'll watch anything he's in, really. Uh, I don't even know who else is in it. Who else? Let's see. Oh, Jay Hernandez. Tim McGraw? Like the singer Tim McGraw? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Uh, Friday Night Lights. You guys let me know. I know they made a show off that, I think. I want to say. Uh, now, next up, guys. It is a Spike Lee joint. A film that is a little more recent in his catalog and his repertoire. Uh, but a film I never caught, uh, nonetheless. When it, when it, but when it did come out in theaters, I heard so many great things. I was like, I'll just wait. I'll wait till it comes out on Blu-ray or, or, or on streamer. And I never got a chance to, but I saw I found a beautiful copy of this on Blu-ray, and it is uh, Miracle at St. Anna. I believe this is based on a true story, and once again, if you guys have been following the channel, especially recently, I've told you guys, and I've told myself this, that I want to watch more war movies. Every single war crime movie that I've seen has been a banger, like as far as quality entertainment. You know, it's, it's horrific stuff that happens. War is hell, uh, but I just want to explore more stories uh, from the men and women that were there. And I want to say that this is based on a true story. It says World War II. Um, don't know if it's based on a true story. I, I believe it was advertised as one, but I could be totally wrong. So I'm glad I got that in Blu-ray, though. Best quality possible. Uh, well, besides 4K, obviously. <laughs> but uh, for me, it's, you know, it's, I love Blu-rays. Um, next up is Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington in The Pelican Brief. Need I say more? I think a lot of people really do... Uh, um, like, they always praise this movie. I haven't really heard any bad bad things. On the back, it says a heart-stopping, spine-chilling, adrenaline-jumping, run-for-your-life thriller. Now, I can't really... Uh, I don't know too much about what this is about. Because, once again, I'm just picking these up. I check the ratings. I check what people have been saying. And I, I see if they're, if they're a good fit, possibly, for the channel. And... The only thing I can and allude, maybe this is like Washington D.C. Maybe they find, uh, maybe they could possibly be lawyers and they uncover something. I don't know. It says from the author of the firm and the client, the director of presumed innocent, presumed innocent, and all the president's men. Okay, 
I haven't seen any of those, so that really doesn't mean much to me, but I'm sure they're, I'm sure this is a good movie. That's all I gotta say, because I looked it up and it had a really high score and good praise. Uh, next up um, was one that I did see on the channel. You guys can check it out, my reaction for that, but I didn't have it in my collection. It was actually on streamer that I was watching it, uh, so it is The Other Guys right there. And once again, like I was talking about, they threw them in this, I believe this must have been like a, a, a blockbuster, yeah, blockbuster right here. Blockbuster logo, throwback right there, um, copy, and they throw them in these DVDs when they're like getting ready to uh, sell them, or I think even on display, they had them like in these cases right here uh, for whatever odd reason. But guess what? I'm gonna slam it into a Blu-ray case that I have. I'm just gonna take out this, you know, insert, and there you go, easy peasy. But the other guys was actually a very, very funny one, one that I didn't think I was gonna like because after 2010, Will Ferrell was kind of dwindling a little bit. Maybe I'll give him a little more leeway. Maybe 2012, maybe 2013. Around Anchorman 2 is when he started to fall off really hard for me as far as comedy goes. But his character in this and Mark Wahlberg were really funny in it. Has an extremely funny intro. Um, I really like it. I also like the captain played by uh, Michael Keaton. I thought it was very funny. I'll definitely rewatch this for sure because it has that quotable uh, value. Uh, next up, guys. Um, now, this was... Okay, these next two were not from a thrift store. So it was a place that's kind of like a warehouse. It's a liquidation place. Um, so I don't know if these are necessarily used or not. I believe they are because they're like taped up and they look really weird. <clears throat> but they're only $3, so I got it. Uh, so this first one, guys, is a Warner Brothers archive collection. Morgan Freeman, Jessica Tandy, Dan Aykroyd, Driving Miss Daisy. And you can see the covers a little jacked up right there, a little weathered. Like someone like left it out in the sun, that's totally fine. I mean, I'm gonna do what I can to save this film. Um, another film that's been on my watch list forever. Like people tell me that this is a very, very great film. I know it's more character driven. I, I believe, I believe it's more character driven. Um, I, I can't even say that I've that I've seen a clip from it or or any any stills. I'm looking at the back here, so I really don't know what it's about other than Morgan Freeman is a driver, um, and it's rated PG. So I'm sure it can't get too extreme <laughs> with whatever nature it is. Uh, so you guys let me know about that pickup right there. This one right here is one of my, um, I know it's hard to say, hey, this is my favorite movie and I don't own it, right? So, but this is one of my favorite horrors uh, as far as like an original, original concept story uh, monster creature feature goes. And Laura's seen it. I've seen it a couple of times, uh, but it was on streamer once again. And uh, now I'm glad we, we own it. Um, this one says the original unrated cut. Now, I don't know if what I saw was the unrated cut or not, but it is The Descent. Uh, now, they did come out with The Descent 2, which was not as good. I did see it, and I, I didn't think it was good. Uh, so this is original unrated cut. Um, it says 99 minutes, so I don't know how much more they added on to it. Maybe there's more gore. It's a 2005 film. I want to say this is from... I don't. I forget which country this is. This was filmed at, but it was... It was a... This is this was a very scary movie, a very very scary movie. Once again, a creature feature. Haven't even opened it up yet because it's like really it's taped up. I don't know why they do that for their Blu-rays. Uh, probably just so people don't steal them. But um, I'm so glad I could add that one to my collection. All right, next up, guys, jumping to a DVD. Now this was at a uh, um, a Goodwill right here in the last couple of weeks that I did pick up. It is a, a one that a lot of people have requested, and I'm really trying to dive deep into the 80s and 90s action films that I have not seen yet because there's been some good ones, especially when it comes to the practicality of explosions, of car chases. I'm here for all of that. Like all that stuff really amazes me, especially when the easy go-to nowadays is using CGI. Even, C guys, even CGI blood and CGI fire and explosions, give me a break. Do that shit old school. But this one right here, Stallone and Kurt Russell, it is Tango in Cash. And I know people are pumped to see me uh, watch this because so many people have requested this one here. Um, and, and I'm like, I, I don't have a copy. I can't, I, you know, it's probably on streamer. It probably is on streamer, but I like to get the physical. I don't know. I like to just hold it, talk about it, look at the pictures in the back and stuff like that. And if it's cool, I'm going to keep it along. If not, I'm going to trade it in and get something else. Uh, but this one, young men, young men right there in their prime, I got to say. Um, what year was this? Was this late 80s or early 90s? I want to say this could possibly even be like early 9... Uh, oh, 89! 89. 89. Okay, so late 80s. Cool. Perfect. That's the perfect, like, time frame for these action movies. 
Arnold was killing it. Van Damme was killing it, right? Even Stigol, uh, Seagal was killing it. Uh, all right, guys. So next up, another Blu-ray right here. Very excited to add this one. I'll be watching this more towards, you know, Christmas time. So November, December-ish. It is a Miracle on 100, uh, 34th Street. Sorry, guys. A Miracle on 34th Street right here. I'm so glad I could get on a Blu-ray. Um, have not seen this one. I believe a couple years back I did watch um, It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, and that one was really good as well. It had a really good message, a very, you know, a lot of great acting in that one. Um, but this is one that I always look up and, and a lot of people like revere this one as a, a Christmas classic to them. So I can't wait to watch this one, um, you know, during the holiday season. So you guys let me know what you guys think of Miracle on 34th Street. Don't even know what that one's about really. It just says a cherished holiday family tradition. Okay. And you got Santa on the front. All right. Now next up. Uh, let me lump these all together because I actually just bought all of these like on... Oh, oh, these are the last ones. Okay, these are the last ones for it, for the haul. And this is my most recent one from a couple days back, guys. Um, and they're all animated Blu-rays. And I, someone must have all donated them all together because I've never seen this many like pristine Blu-rays. With sli Some with slipcovers, some without. And... I haven't done really any animated that I can think of watches for the channel. And it's not that I don't like them. It's just that some are a good fit for me. I find the humor. I, I find the rewatch value in them. And some are just one and done. But I wanted to take a chance. I wanted to ask you guys' opinions if you watch animated films. I'm not talking about anime. I'm talking about more like in the vein of like um, Disney, Pixar, uh, DreamWorks, uh, those studio type of deal right here, which I think these are all part of Sony as well, Warner Brothers for this last one. Um, so yeah, let's just get into like my last four picks. Right here on Blu-ray, it looks amazing, the, the copy right here. It is, uh, and it's been very, very praised as of last year. The Mitchells versus The Machines right here. Uh, I did see this advertised on Netflix. I believe ne this was like a, not a Netflix original, but Netflix was definitely pushing it uh, as like, hey, check us, check this out on our streamer, right? Uh, so on the back, it says the best animated movie of the year. I don't even know what it's about. I just know a lot of cinephiles that I know talked about it when it came out and they give it really high scores, like four out of fives, five out of fives. And I'm so glad I get to watch this now on, uh, you know, on Blu-ray, you know, the comfort of my own home. And uh, I get to watch it for the channel because I think I will be watching this one because I think there's a huge fan base for it. Uh, now, next up uh, for the animated is Jim Carrey, Steve Carell, Dr. Seuss, Horton, Here's a who. Now, I didn't check out any of these Dr. Seuss um, animated films around the time. I know Lorax was a big one. I want to say even the live action of Dr. Seuss, I never checked out with Mike Myers. Uh, I, I, I've actually been told to like stay away from that one. Like that's a cursed film almost. Like people tell me to stay away from that one. Just like they tell me to stay away from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. It's going to ruin my childhood. But uh, that being said, um, you know... These are great voice. These are great actors and voice actors and whatnot. And who else is in it? Uh, Steve Carell, Jim Carrey, Will Arnett, Seth Rogen, Isla Fisher, Amy Poehler. Wow. So, so you got some big names in here. Um, and I know it's part of the Dr. Seuss world. I don't know what it's about. I really don't know what it's about. Oh, it looks like this is a, like a French copy or also a. Spanish copy on the bottom. I don't know if you can see the text. I don't even know what language this is. I'm just guessing it's either Spanish or French. Yeah. I'm not sure. Wait, let me see. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Dead air. Yeah, I don't know. But let me know if that's a good one, too. Uh, next up was just kind of like a blind buy because I don't even know if, the, if I'm going to watch this one uh, for a first time watch unless you guys want to uh, uh, check this one out with me. But what, what drew me in was, one, it has a slipcover, it's a Blu-ray, and it says from the creators of How to Train Your Dragon, and I heard a lot of people really do like that film, it is Rise of the Guardians, and it looks kind of cool, I mean, DreamWorks does put out, I mean, I love Shrek, I absolutely love Shrek, I saw the first two, and I like those characters, I like the world building of that, and um, yeah, I mean, the animation looks okay. Uh, I don't know what it's about too much. It looks like there's an Easter bunny or something in the back. I don't know. I don't even want to guess. But you guys let me know. Rise of the Guardians. Is that a good one? Um, I don't even know if there's sequels or anything in it. I'm guessing that that's, that's a first one of, of its kind. Uh, and last but not least, guys, for the animated in all my haul right here. We're coming up on 30 minutes of this video. It is Happy Feet right here. And believe it or not, I have not seen this one. It's from the early 2000s. I know that. Uh, 2005 or something? 2006. Um... But yeah, it has uh, Elijah Wood, 
Robin Williams, rest in peace. Bertie Murphy, rest in peace. Hugh Jackman and Nicole Kidman right there. Wow. Um, and when this came out, this was cute. I won't lie. I know there's sequels. Uh, I believe there's a couple sequels. Uh, this is a cute one. Like, like I remember seeing like videos of them dancing and stuff and you know, uh, so I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of cool music and stuff like that. Sometimes I find joy in these types of movies. It's, it's different, right? It's different than the norm of like, you know, like an action movie or something like that. Uh, so it'd be cool to check this one out. Uh, but once again, Thank you guys so much for watching all of my videos, watching this video. You made it to the end. Let me know what you guys think of my pickup of my haul. I didn't even count how many I have, but uh, maybe I should do that real, real quick. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven Blu-rays and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 DVDs. So we got roughly almost, I want to say 30, around 30. My math is wrong, you know, it's obviously wrong. Um, not quick-witted like that. But anyways, guys, once again, thank you so much. Let me know if you've seen any of those films. Which would you like to see me react to the most on the channel? That's what I'm really wondering because I'm going to watch most of these eventually for the channel, but what do you want to see first, all right? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys did appreciate and like this video, show support now by hitting that big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel today to join the Flix Talk family for so many more reactions and haul videos like this. All right, guys. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.